Welcome to Second Holistic Spotlight. I'm Bill Hannon, your host tonight, with Josie Way as my co-host. I have two women from the herbal community, Maggie. Hespanian. Hespanian, yes. <laughs> and uh, Leslie Wooler. We've uh, known each other for many years, but uh, I always, I usually just refer to Maggie yeah, as Maggie. <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're going to be talking tonight about the many applications of the uh, herbal world as well as uh, our community that we have in Rhode Island, uh, referred to as Ocean State Herbal Association or OSHA. Uh, Leslie, uh, it's good to have you on the show. We did Bill. this. We did this uh, a couple of times, right? Yeah. Right, a, a few years ago, and I think it's a good time for us to get out there and start uh, promoting our herbal association again. Mm, that's right. Because it is open to the public. Right. Anybody can come. It's always the third Thursday of the month, mm. um, seven o'clock, and we hold it at. Most of the times, it's at the Herb Wife in Wickford. Uh, that's the shop that I have there. And the meetings go for a couple hours, like seven to nine, and we cover different herbal topics each month. Right, right. And sometimes we specialize on one herb or a certain topic, like recently we talked about Ayurvedic medicine, another time about traditional Chinese medicine. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes we meet at people's homes, like we've met at Maggie's before. Mm -hmm. so. A couple yeah, times. Posted, yeah. yeah. So. That's always nice. And we have other people in the community who uh, we always enjoy going over because it's just a nice, cozy atmosphere. Everybody feels very comfortable with mm. each other. And this way, we're able to share um, many different aspects of different herbs. I mean, a lot of times we'll just focus maybe on, on one herb or one type of herb, and everybody just comes in with so much information because everybody comes at it from different points of view. Hmm. Yeah, this past month I wasn't able to go cause, because of moving, but the meeting was held at Brett's home and he hmm. lives in the woods in like West Greenwich right. and he specifies or he's specific on using wild edibles. Right. So that's what the meeting was about that night. And Sustainability he, and being yeah. able to just uh, comfortably pick weeds that you know that you can mm. eat and he prepared a Flowers. wild foods dinner he does a so, great job with that yeah he's extremely knowledgeable about that right so and can you go to these meetings as a beginner anybody that only knows go. a little bit oh anybody it's open to the public we welcome people to come so they can learn more about herbs yeah. and herbal medicine is there a charge for these meetings? nope it's all, okay. it's all free it's open to the public it's not like we have a membership or dues or anything. So, um, yeah, we really welcome people to come. It's a good way to start learning. Yeah. Along yeah. with a few books, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, and people, you know, in our group will recommend books for people and things like that. Right, and the Internet is such an open book in its own. Mm -hmm. uh, you can get so specific. Lots of information. <laughs> and so... Um, we uh, we thoroughly enjoy just being able to make the connection on, on a monthly basis, uh, yeah. and mm -hmm. everybody, like I said, is able to come at, uh, such as Maggie right here, having a background in uh, nursing. She's an RN, and as well as an herbalist. As well as an herbalist, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. She, she has a, a, a great deal to fall back on. We have a few talented people within the community. Yeah. Um, but Maggie's also, in fact, <coughs> she, she came to my rescue one time when I became dehydrated. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a good perspective, you know, because I can, um, a lot of times at the meeting, we'll be discussing a certain herb or, and what folks have been using it for. You know, everyone mm -hmm. in the room has either a, um, they're either practicing with clients or, the, or themselves and their mm -hmm. families. A lot of us are like that. Mm. Um, but we'll discuss a, a certain herb and how they're using it, and I can usually give a perspective from Western medicine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. why a certain herb is working or why mm -hmm. a certain herb might not or something like that. So it is. Mm -hmm. And everybody in the room brings something like that different to the table. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We all learn from each other. and yeah. yeah, it's great to be able to share all the information with each other. Yeah. And it's interesting how when we do have the meetings, everybody brings a different piece of information. Like mm -hmm. if we're sharing information about one plant, not everybody brings the same mm -hmm. information. So yeah. it's kind of interesting how it works out that way. Yeah, and we always yeah. learn, like, there'll be some usage for a plant that we didn't know or didn't 
weren't aware of. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's amazing. I mean, yeah, no, you know, we, we have uh, one woman who always is looking for the dye, the dye factor, you know. Oh, yeah, d using the plants for dyes. For dyes. Yeah. Coloring. Yeah. Colors. yeah. 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 And it's just interesting. I mean, here we're focusing on a medicinal aspect or a health aspect or uh, something to help with a chronic situation. Mm -hmm. and, right. and she comes in and she starts talking about, well, yes, but this was used by the Indians, you know, it's because it was a. Mm -hmm. Right, some of us might not even know what the plant looks like. Um, mm -hmm. As far as in, in its living form, like we'll use the dried herbs or mm -hmm. something, and she'll know and the, all the berries will be blue or green. Or, mm -hmm. To, to use the color of the plant, which is mm -hmm. very different. And, and some people would probably would be interested in the aromatherapeutic uses of herbs. Well, Leslie yeah. actually has Resident a very good background with that. Resident expert. In yeah, I'm a, a registered aromatherapist and a um, regional director for NAHA, which is the National Association of Holistic Aromatherapy. So I teach a lot of classes and I work with essential oils. Mm -hmm. A lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm always making blends for people, or mm -hmm. you know, whether it's for personal, you know, uh, for perfume, or for some kind of problem they might be addressing, mm -hmm. topical or spraying in the air, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I really enjoy working with the oils. Yeah, it's it's a wonderful thing. To I have a small example. I made some candles and I would put some oils in them mm -hmm. and I found a blend that um, it's not a secret it was uh, raspberry and lime I it was were flavors that were scents that were in there mm -hmm. and people that were used it wasn't even a beeswax candle which would have been much better but the people that were using it one person didn't know that it was for depression, for the aromas were to lift depression. Well, most of the citrus ones are antidepressants. Mm -hmm. um, lime, orange, tangerine, bergamot. Mm -hmm. Bergamot's a great antidepressant, and yeah. um, they're very uplifting oils. Yeah, and his daughter came into the house, and she said, Dad, what are you doing? I feel better now that I'm here. and. It's, yeah, because not only do they work on a physical level, they also work on an energetic and mm -hmm. a vibrational level. Mm -hmm. So, then they work fast. They work quickly. Yeah, and that's a lot of times that's how people might learn about it. They're surprised by, by it. accident. But then they, yeah. yeah. Well, or yeah, yeah. You know, because I, I I I gave it to my girlfriend who was suffering depressions, and she her her boyfriend at the time wasn't feeling well, so she said, here, try this. Yeah. And uh, it made a big difference to him. So, and, and someone who didn't know what it was supposed to do noticed something that she was feeling mm -hmm. better. Mm -hmm. Which is, I think that's really cool. And there's certain yeah, ones well, they work. that work really well for really grief. Well. Mm -hmm. Since you and I both yeah. you know, know a lot about that that there are specific oils, essential oils, that are good for that. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are the florals, mm -hmm. like jasmine and rose, alang alang, things like that. And you can combine those with, um, vanilla is another one, mm. with the citrus oils. And so they are very uplifting. I find vanilla to be so relaxing. You know, it's yeah. just, you just kind of put There's not too many people that don't like the smell of vanilla. Right. Yeah, it's and it, it tends one to of them, be, but you don't like it? No. Oh. no. <laughs> it's funny because, and I find that most men seem to prefer that over women, the smell in, of vanilla. In o oh, really? Yeah. In the times smell when of vanilla over women? or No. No. Oh. <laughs> men than prefer women. it more than women. <laughs> right. Right. In, more in, than women prefer it. Yes. In, yes. Right, right. Yes. 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 I'll clarify that. In older times, when perfumes were quite expensive, a lot of women would use, uh, and extracts of, yeah. of vanilla was expensive too, but they would have that, and they would put, well, they would little, dab yeah. the vanilla. That's true, vanilla mm. extract, they would use that as a perfume. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And back in um, probably like the 1700s, when it was around when they had the Black Plague, um, I guess, I don't know if they were doctors or not, but they used to put these masks over their face. Oh, yes. The ones that didn't get sick, they right. either had herbs in there or they had oils in oils. there mm. to smell. 
and they were the ones that stayed healthy. They, well, they refer to that as the thieves blend. Well, there is a thieves blend. I made, I've made that up a lot over the winter. Right. And a lot of those are the like the hot oils, like cinnamon and clove, mm. uh, rosemary, eucalyptus. That would open up your respiratory passages. Yeah. But well, they're also, also very boost your immune anti system. Yeah, they're also very antibacterial. Yeah. And, and the reason why it's, it got the name Thieves Blend was because during the Black Plague, they wore a mask, they wore a mask with, with the, the oils or, or she, like she had mentioned, the herbs in it, but most mm. of the times it was just a spray of oil or a dip of oil. Yeah, and lemon's the other one that's in there. there like. There's also... Well, uh, this way they, they would <coughs> raid the people's the houses who <laughs> had died. Died. <laughs> oh, yeah. and not get sick. And yeah. not get sick because mm. they have the protection of the antiviral, antibacterial. Yeah. Yeah. Well, along the terms of people that are doing things well, uh, there are nice blends for sleeping, for promoting a good night's sleep. Mm -hmm. and well, lavender is the most popular yeah. one. But some people don't like the smell of lavender. Even it's probably considered like the queen of essential yes, oils. Yes, it is. And most people, you know, it, and it's easy to blend with anything. I it's tell safe you, I find, I find lavender oil um, and, and tea tree, which uh, of course has a very yeah. strong scent, you get a burn. <clears throat> the first thing I do is I put, or, or bite. I just mm -hmm, got bit by a yellow mm -hmm. jacket yesterday. I just came right in, put my finger over the bottle, turn it upside down, put it right over the bite, and yeah. about a half a well, minute I later it was gone. Well, I swear by tea tree, and yes. I adore lavender. Well, those are the two that you, that are safe to use neat on your skin. On your like skin. Undiluted. Mm -hmm. So um, those two. Yeah, so if the you're going to have any essential aren't. oils in your house, those are the two I'd recommend to start out with. Mm -hmm. Because tea trees like antibacterial, antiviral, antifungal, anti right. antiseptic, antimicrobial, anti everything, you know. So yeah, and it's it a, does smell very. It's medicinal. a real good doobie. Yeah. <laughs> right. It, it was a, a very pine, piney taste to it. But the thing is, why well, I say taste because I, I put a drop on my toothbrush. But um, with the the tea tree, tea yeah. tree, just a drop. And yeah. Oh. oh. I put it in, just taking it in my mouth, but it is really strong. So I use uh, I use a, a non-fluoride toothpaste. But yeah, I do too. Yeah, me too, yeah. It's peppermint, yeah. it's peppermint flavored because mm -hmm. I know I'm gonna be putting a drop of the yeah. tea, tree. tea tree on it. But the thing is that um, oh. by brushing my teeth and my tongue and then swishing it between my teeth, this way I know that everything is getting covered with the tea tree Mm. And and your blood is picking it up through mm -hmm. the mucous membrane. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and if you get any under your tongue, it, it it's absorbed. Right, but the yeah. nice thing about the, yes, that's a very fast pickup, a sub sublingual. But on your tongue, the back of your throat, on, or, you know, all all the mucous membrane around the teeth and whatnot. I mean, the blood just picks it right up through there, it just that's goes right true. through. Mm. And so your entire your body so is tiny. being reinforced. Your your entire immune system. Being, being reinforced just by brushing your teeth. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. and people that True. have. Great to do in the winter time. Mm -hmm. And people that are having chemotherapy and radiation and dryness, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's a great yeah. way to. Mm -hmm. Instead of just the glycerin wipes, that way. It takes, it, it is uh, very tough. It, 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 I tell you, it's, it's, um, it's, it takes a lot to get used to, you know? But yeah. once you get used to it, it's, it's just something you do. Mm -hmm. What is that? Um, you were talking about the glycerin, so I'm coming back to xy xylenol. There's, Xylamin? There's something that uh, promotes moisture on the mucous membranes. Uh, a lot of times, toothpaste, I'm starting to use it now to, so that your mouth is moist all night long. Hmm. Really? Yes. I'm not familiar with that. Oh, okay. you know? I'm not thinking yes, of, yeah. I, I'm not getting. It's a, a, a XY type of name to it. Um, mm. Xylenol, I think, or something along oh. that lines. But I just figured I'd mention that in case somebody knew they could pick up on that and, and share mm -hmm. the information with our viewers. We'll be looking that up on the internet right. next. Right, sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, keeping mucous membranes moist. <laughs> well, it's, it's apparently when you sleep, if you breathe through your mouth, which a lot of people mm. do, uh, what happens is that bacteria starts to grow because you don't have the moisture there, but by using this uh, toothpaste that has this stuff in it. Uh, it keeps your mouth moist all night long so that the bacteria is less likely to grow. Mm. So. And would yeah. that be herbal or 
you know, it's, allopathic. It's, it's, I, you know, I can't tell you off the top of my head. Okay. Um, but um, I just know that. Because there is a preparation called Zyflamint, but I don't know what it's for. Zyflamint's an anti-inflammatory. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's put out by a new chapter, a specific company that, you know, has lots of supplements. Mm -hmm. And that's probably their biggest selling one, and it's an anti-inflammatory. Oh, yeah. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. As I remember, my husband did take that regularly. Yeah. For it's his got turmeric and rosemary and ginger in it, mm -hmm. all great anti-inflammatory herbs. But yeah, that's one of their biggest selling mm. um, supplements. Now, we were talking a little bit before the show, but there are a lot of things that are common, you know, um, seasoning herbs and stuff mm -hmm. that people can grow, mm -hmm. and some of them do have medicinal uses. We were talking about sage and thyme. Time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, you can talk about yes. that a little because you use them. You have them grown in your mm -hmm. garden and in your in mm -hmm. your home in the winter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, both of those I grow all the time, and I um, you know, in my small suburban garden, you know, I have lots of thyme, sage, rosemary, um, and I will grow. You know, will dry them or use them fresh either way, mm -hmm. and and to cook with them. So you mm -hmm. just have. The, the culinary use is great. I use them all the time, but but thyme is um, great for um, anything you know, sort of lung up, right? For infections, and if you feel you're getting a cold or something, simple to cut some fresh thyme, put it in a cup, pour hot water over it, is really good medicine for anything bacterial, viral, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's antiseptic as well, and. Um, to just drink time tea yeah. is very simple and we, and, and we know it's safe to ingest. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. And then the oh, sage yeah. is really good for gargling for a sore mm -hmm. throat. For so. sore throat and mm -hmm. uh, oral things. If you have oral surgery or anything problems with gums and things, can make um, mm -hmm. I make my own mouthwash. It's very time astringent. And sage, and sage is very astringent. Mm -hmm. They also give mm -hmm. it to uh, mothers who are nursing, nursing if they like, want to stop nursing. Mm -hmm. Or like a witch hazel. Um, would it have the same effect being a in a stringent like witch hazel? Uh, I think that's a little well, that's, strong. that's strong. That's more for external. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. But yes. Um, yeah, they give them sage tea. It's also good for women in menopause. Sage tea mm -hmm. <laughs> helps with hot flashes. Oh. Yeah. Right, and that's the nice thing about if this. If only I knew. Well, you know, <laughs> but that's that's one of the nice things about this is that um, our community, a lot of people just come. And they have an issue, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and you wouldn't believe the amount of people that have tried things over the years that no work. And and some people say, "Well, I tried that, and I didn't find it that effective." But you know, you have so many different inputs, and you know that it's safe because people have used it. And mm -hmm. um, right, and how they yeah. prepared it too. Yeah, right. You know, like you have a plant growing in your garden, and someone else has used it for a specific reason, and you have the same. Like people will come to the meetings and talk about the same problem, and someone will just sort of share the recipe. Mm. Sure, How just like we were talking yeah. about the salmon seal, right? Just yeah. before yeah. the show. Yeah, I, I mean, know. it's just amazing. It's the yeah, just like that. What yeah. I've I've noticed is someone had told me it's, it's it was a Native American that whenever you have something growing like poison ivy, <laughs> there was also something growing in the vicinity. Jewelweed. Jewelweed. That will. That will Counteract, counteract it. it. Any negative effects, yeah. And but the poison ivy has gotten more virulent over the past couple of years. It's just stronger, mm. more potent, and you see more of it Because more people are killing the poison ivy. With that spray, it's the Roundup. And somehow yeah. stronger varieties are growing mm -hmm. to resist that. Yeah, one of the yards that I work in doing gardening, because I have a landscaping business, there's so much poison ivy this year. But he has a stand of... Uh, Jewelweed that's humongous. Mm. So mm. if you feel like you just can't deal with it, you just go in there and you rub the jewelweed all over yourself before and after mm. and because yeah, of the poison true. ivy. It does really stops the itch. Mm. Jewelweed yeah. and it grows usually right near in the poison vicinity. Ivy. Oh yeah. And yeah. if and if you don't have any jewelweed, which I have come across. Uh, Leslie had the uh, perfect solution one time, which is using what, Dawn? Oh yeah, they recommend that. You mm. get Dawn dishwashing liquid. and Breaks oh. down the oil. And, uh, because yeah. I have, one and of my daughters has a, a bad allergy. And I would carry it with me. And uh, would you spray gardening. that on yourself before you touch it, or? 
No, if I came in contact a lot, a lot right. of times when you're out working in somebody's yard and all of a sudden you're pulling up poison ivy with something else, like, oh my God. Oh, yeah. And uh, so I would have a little container with watered down Dawn. It had a little bit of Dawn liquid and then you just wipe it on. It gets mm. rid of it right away. The Another oh. thing works really well for it too is rescue remedy. Uh-huh. Oh. I have used that directly on the poison ivy and it just, just takes yeah. care of it immediately. I don't know if it's the alcohol in it or just the energetics of the herbs, but mm. it works really well. Yeah, we lived in uh, a community that was <clears throat> off the ocean, mm -hmm. and what they used to say is whenever you came in contact <clears throat> with uh, the poison ivy, to go take a bath in the, the ocean, the salt water, and all of the herbs. That helps a little bit. You know, the, not herbs, but the minerals from the salt water yeah. well, seem to I make just a difference. I heard a thing on the radio just two days ago because a friend of mine it. Oh. cut her leg really bad. She's a nurse and uh, it got a little infected. Mm -hmm. So she went and, you know, went in the ocean because it was down on her shin. Yeah. And then I just heard on the radio Staff just infection. the other day, like, the, the it's a fallacy that you're not supposed to go in the ocean because there's so many germs and chemicals and I'm like, oh, and I always well, I thought think that you should go in the ocean. That I think it used to be water true. was healing, but well, the water yeah. was maybe yeah. more, true, but the, more since pristine. Our populations but have yeah. grown like you just last week, right near against the beach was closed beaches because closed. of bacterial mm. counts. Yeah. That's because yeah. of increased population. So yeah. what I was thinking, but I think if you can find pristine in, ocean. in the preparation <laughs> yeah. Yeah. for, um, you know, that you're using, you could add some salt. It might not. It might be helpful. One of the things, again, because we're talking about poison ivy, we have a friend, Deb, who um, actually uses Michael Ford's... Um, I've used that, the blue chamomile serum, mm -hmm. and it worked really well. I had a touch of poison ivy uh, last year or the year before, mm -hmm. and so I put some on it, stopped the well, itching that, immediately. Th that is very powerful stuff, that blue yeah. chamomile. Yeah. And, and we can talk about that for a minute. an anti-inflammatory, right. so... It really did help. Right, and chamomile is just so easy for the average person to make. I mean, one of the things that we do in the community is we show people how to make their own medicines or whatnot, mm -hmm. how to grow them, and we will talk about that before the show. What are the differences between the German and Roman? Well, the German is an annual, so mm -hmm. you know you have to buy the plants every year, and it gets about 18 inches tall, mm -hmm. where the Roman is a perennial, will come back every year, and that's a ground cover. Mm -hmm. And it has a, a sweeter smell to it, mm -hmm. kind of an apple-y sort of smell. Mm. Very soft, ferny little foliage and sure. little teeny tiny flowers. Mm -hmm. But it, it takes a lot to harvest it to make a cup of tea because the flowers mm. are so small. Mm -hmm. That's why it's very expensive if you buy it dried, where mm -hmm. most of the dried chamomile flowers that you buy are the German chamomile. German, right. Mm -hmm. You know, and they have different Latin names. But, right. Um, and that's how you can definitely tell them apart when you read. And why would anybody want chamomile? I mean, it's well, chamomile itself, it's Roman, very soothing. is very soothing and calming, very mm -hmm. relaxing, good for the digestive system. And the essential oil is actually very good for pain. It's mm -hmm. a great pain relief formula. Whereas the German is a great anti-inflammatory. That's a blue oil. It has uh, chamagiline in it, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it that color, the agiline in the oil. And that's one of the better anti-inflammatories. Now you're talking about flowers and harvesting flowers and whatnot. And it won't be too long before the St. John's wort. I know. Usually it's around the summer solstice that you find it. And that's when it flowers. That's right. And it has this tiny, tiny little yellow flower. There's five petals. It's mm -hmm. really small. Bright, bright yellow. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you can tell the leaves if you're looking at a plant because it grows on roadside and gravel and stuff. Disturbed soil. Disturbed soil, and <coughs> the Latin name is Hypericum perforatum, and Hypericum is because of the the chemical constituent in there, Hypericin, right. which mm -hmm. turns the oil a bright red when you harvest it. It's a yellow it flower, but it, it actually turns it. Yeah, red. when you pick the flowers, the um, your fingers will turn purple from mm. picking them because of the Hypericin in it. Cool. But if you pick one of the little leaves and like hold it up to the sunlight, mm -hmm. it's perforated, like little pinholes, little mm -hmm. dots. So mm -hmm. that's one way you can tell if you have the right plant. Mm -hmm. And that's where the perforatum comes from, that, that light. Yeah. But for, but for most people, it would be wise for them 
to go to some, to oh, get absolutely. some books and to go to some of the meetings of OSHA. Oh yeah. And get some expertise and help from others right. as to which plants they're looking at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll just take a moment here just to uh, thank our viewers for joining us today. Uh, Josie Way and I are uh, interviewing um, Maggie and Leslie uh, from the Ocean State Herbal Association. And what we're doing is we're just trying to give everybody a little bit of a background on hmm. the service that we offer the community. Yeah. Um, and this is an important service where we're able to um, come together um, a lot of times, such as when we get together with Brett and whatnot, and, you know, he takes us right out in the field. Uh, you've led weed walks, mm -hmm. um, which is great for people, not just for foraging, but just to be able to recognize. Recognize the plants that they can use as medicine for mm -hmm. themselves. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of them are just growing wild. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. the, the, some, that's the best source a lot of times, to, is to find them. And, then, and also to understand not to harvest all that you see, you know, mm. it, has, it has to be to leave some. Exactly. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we, not to harvest it by the roadside. About all those things, right? The, yeah. Where it is in, in nature can sometimes be uh, toxic, really. Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. need to know, and and that is what we do. Like we'll do it together, and if someone's new to the group, they'll learn from those of us that have wild crafted or wild harvested plants. So. Hmm. That's a, yeah. That's a very important thing. If someone wants to start mm -hmm. using plants medicinally, mm -hmm. is to mm -hmm. learn from someone directly that has used them before, so they're using the right plant in the right way. And I think everyone should understand that when we talk about using herbs, it doesn't mean we're taking all of regular medicine and throwing it out. Oh no, no. We're, we're no. combining. Right. Were you getting the best of both worlds, adding the medicinal benefits from herbs to? Western right. medicine. That's right. Yes. Complementary mm -hmm. is one reason why mm -hmm. they use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they call do call it complementary medicine. I mean, yes. you you, ha you do have to, and well, that's one of the things Leslie and I have done. Um, I, I have several resources that I use that when I know somebody wants to explore, um, especially for chronic situations, it's not so much acute. Um, you have resources that, you, that there's not going to be any contraindications with the medicines that they may be taking. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, somebody like Maggie or Michael Ford or somebody who has a, a strong understanding of chemistry uh, and how botany and biology and work allopathic together. Allopathic medicine, yeah. Right. right. How, the, how those other modalities, how those other treatments are going to affect the body. Mm. Then, it's, then you can create that layering. Mm. of one treatment and another. Oftentimes we use herbal medicine to alleviate side effects. Like SEAC. From, from other, um, mm. from more conventional treatments have a lot of side effects. So sometimes knowing that that's the right conventional treatment to be on and then dealing with the side effects can also, can often be a, Yeah, and um, you've had a lot of a very experience clear way that the two go together. Doing that with your mom. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My so. mom was uh, yeah, diagnosed with uh, lung cancer um, and was taking oral chemotherapy. And I, at the same time, she was taking herbs that I blended for her with, um, we made a, like a stew that also involved um, bones, which mm -hmm. had the marrow and all those nutrients that helped to support her body so the side effects of the chemotherapy didn't debilitate more her. More mm -hmm. diminished. And then right. actually, then it, I think it, it did a lot more her body was able to Helping fight the cancer itself. Helping her body recover, mm -hmm. recover mm -hmm. on itself. Recovered, she mm -hmm. no longer has the cancer. Yeah, right. because you have to support the immune system, mm -hmm. you know, and because the, of what yeah. it's going through. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Leslie, uh, also, your, your shop again is where? The Your Boyf in Whitford. Right, Whitford, Rhode you, Island. And you also have other teachers that come in besides yourself that yes. offer classes. So. Classes and workshops and all kinds of stuff. That's and where most of us in Rhode Island get our medicinal herbs from right. Leslie, yeah. Leslie's shop. I have over 200 varieties of medicinal and culinary. So. Yes, I yeah, know. Yeah. It's easy to yes, get we lost. Do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you again for Psychic Holistic Spotlight. We appreciate everybody being here and sharing this wealth of information for everybody.